Good morning, good afternoon, all of you. It's my pleasure to welcome you to a new session of the GS1 webinars, whose objective is to share the latest GS1 standard implementation experiences in the different areas and, and also in the different processes in the hospital setting. So we would like to thank you for your interest, and we hope that you will be able to take away some learnings from today's webinar. First of all, uh, I would like to apologize in advance as Sumi is playing some tricks on us today lately. So if uh, some captions appear on the screen, uh, please apologize. There's nothing we can do at this stage. Maybe you can deactivate it by yourself. So we apologize in advance for this inconvenience if the captions appear at any stage. So we will have the opportunity today to learn about the newly integrated management processes for medical devices that have been implemented at the first affiliated hospital of Sengzhou University uh, with the aim of improving the traceability of the medical devices and the proper and safer use, as well as the billing system. Before moving on to the presentation, I would like to briefly remind you uh, of the GS1 competition low quotient under which all GS1 meetings are operated. Remember that the purpose of the group is to enhance the ability of all industry members to compete more efficiently. This means there shall be no discussion of prices, allocation of customers, products, boycotts, refusals to deals, or market share. If any participant believes the group is drifting toward impermissible discussion, the topic shall be tabled and the opinion of a council can be obtained. The full caution is available via the link below in case you would like to read it in full. So we are pleased to introduce and welcome today's speaker, Mrs. Simen Wang from the first affiliated hospital of Sengzhou University in China that will share her experience on how to improve the medical devices management through the use of GS1 standards. I encourage you to stay connected, to stay tuned, and not to miss the opportunity to interact with our guest speaker then during the Q&A session that will take place just after her presentation. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to Simen Wang. Please, Simen, the floor is yours. Thank you, thanks, Molly. Let me share my telephone. Okay, that's okay. Okay, let's see. Yes. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. It's, uh, I'm very glad to give the presentation for you. And my topic is improving medical device management through the use of the GS1 standards. So first of all, please let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Simu Wang and I come from the medical equipment department of the first affiliated hospital of Zhengzhou University, which is the largest level three grade hospital in China. And today I will divide my presentation to four parts. Firstly, I will give uh, some brief introduction of my hospital, and then I will talk about the difficulties, uh, the difficulties in medical device regulation. And the third part will be the some basic information about UDI, and the fourth part will be application of the UDI in our hospital. So uh, let's begin with the hospital in, in introduction. Um, our hospital is currently the largest level three grade, grade A hospital in China, which integrates medical treatment, teaching, research, prevention, healthy care, and recuperation. And it was established in September 1928 and has history of 95 years now. This, this slide shows the branch of our hospital. So nowadays we have uh, four branches and another one, uh, the fifth one uh, is under construction. And this uh, slide shows 
the scale of our house paper. And we have the 10.5, uh, cell and 5, and 120 clinical medical technology departments, and 279 wards, and 63 million annual clinic, a cl uh, clinic a month, and so on. And then let's move to the part two. I will talk about difficulties in medical device regulation. Um, there are two important regulations which belong to the administrative regulation, give the legal requirements that medical device using units shall preferably keep the raw materials of class three medical device purchased and ensure the traceability of the information. So this slide shows the procedures of the medical device which sent to our hospital. The first line the supplier needs to send the medical device to the hospital, and then our staff will do the acceptance and record the product information. And the, uh, during this procedure, they have two choices. First one is handwriting, another one is computer input. And in this part, we also have two choices. The first one is do the code scanning analysis, and another one is manual input. So one of the key points of medical device regulation is the recording and tracing of its information. To follow information well, it is necessary to ensure the accuracy of the information source, both handwriting or manual input information, which can lead to errors in all subsequent traceability information, making it difficult to ensure the safety of the device. So this picture shows the traditional ways of recording uh, information of the product. They got a lot of uh, papers, documents. And the next picture is shows in the past, our hospital uh, was experienced uh, flood. So a lot of the documents uh, were, were soaked. So it's also the drawback of the traditional ways to record the information. So I'd like to turn to the third part some basic information about UDI. So as we know, the UDI is short of the unique medical device identification, and it's usually made of two parts. The first one is device uh, identifiers, and next one is production identifiers. So this slide shows three characters of the UDI. The first one is one dimensional code. Uh, the second one is QR code. Third one is RFID code. So I also give three pictures about the uh, label of the medical device based on different kinds of the carrier of the UDI. So talking about UDI, I'd like to share some um, some background information about the UDI. So first one is the requirements from FDA from American. Uh, they have two requirements about UDI. The first one is easily readable plain text, and another one is uh, automatic identification and data capture technology. So this is the Chinese government give the requirements about the UDI. So there are three requirements. The first one is uniqueness, and the second one is stability, and the third one is expandability. And this show us the implementation of UDI. So if a manufacturer wants to uh, give the UDI of their product, there are three, uh, there are four uh, steps. The first one is coding, and the second one is CI submission, and the third one is data sharing, and the fourth one is data application. Uh, it, it, will, um, it is worth noting that uh, the registrants should submit DI data when applying for medical device registration, and they must upload this DI and related information to the unique database. So uh, let's show uh, if we use a QR code and we use our just use our uh, mobile phone to scan uh, to scan the QR code, and we can get all of the information about this product. Uh, show on our mobile phone.
So now I'd like to move to the last part of vacation of UDIE, our hospital. So our hospital introduced the information system, which named OERs to do the management of high value medical device based on UDI. There are two pictures show both the interfaces of the suppliers and the hospitals. And this system established the information interaction between the suppliers and hospitals. And this slide show two databases in China about UDI. The one is medical insurance code database. Another one is UDCAD database, the UDI database. And they also have two ports. This one is hospital port, and another one is supplier port. So this is the UDI database. And this one is medical insurance code database. We also can see the UDI is already in these two databases. So firstly, the supplier needs to maintain UDI for the winning products on the, uh, on the supplier's page. So we need to choose the UDI from the database because our system is already connected to the UDI database and they only need to select their DI from the database, just like the picture shows. And then the health fatal part, all these, the UDI codes pushed by the suppliers to prevent issues such as the uh, wrong product's name or models from being pushed. The clinical department needs to submit their demand for a medical device online and after being reviewed by the medical equipment department, the order will be summarized and sent to the supplier. The supplier can receive the order information on their phone or computer. And then suppliers need to uh, garage their delivery notes based on the hospital orders and need to fill in product related information. They can be automatically filled out by scanning UDI, parsing based on GS1 rules, saving time, improving efficiency, and ensuring accuracy. So if we just use the manual input or have writing, um, and then there will have the risk of the errors. So this is the delivery note of our hospital. So we can see there are name of the product, name of the manufacturer, model, and quantity, unit, price, batch number, or serial number, and expired, uh, expiration date. So all of this uh, are the DI, just the device, produ uh, device production information, and uh, and of production information. So if we use the all, uh, if we get this information all from the UDI, so we can make sure all of this, all of this information that come from the original manufacturer. So we can make sure uh, they're accurate. So this uh, show us some uh, secondary warehouse management. So we medical device are accepted and store in the secondary warehouse of the operating room. The nurse need, the nurse need to scan the UDI and send their name and operating room number to the PDI to collect them. Only medical device collected by scanning the UDI can be charged during surgery. And medical device that have not been scanned and bonded cannot, uh, and bond cannot be charged during the surgery. It can be better. It can uh, it can help us to do better uh, management of the secondary warehouse and prevent exchange of the medical device and more accurate complete the building of the surgical medical device. So after the medical device are charged, the nurse will print print the medical usage registration form and attach the original label of the medical device to the label sticking page. These documents will be placed in the patient's case uh, permanent, uh, permanently to pro uh, the product information in the document is sourced from the information scan and analyzed during acceptance registration by scanning the UDI based on the GS1 standards. So all of these documents are required by the Chinese regulations to be stored in the case. So only the information come from the original manufacturer. The scanning by uh, scanning uh, through the UDI analysis, uh, we can make sure all of these informations are right 
and uh, we can make sure it's accuracy. So the hospital can check all information of the product by the system, including the GS1 code, uh, the plain text, and the serial number and of a specific device, the expiration date of a specific, uh, specific device, and so on. So it means uh, that one day, maybe some supervising government uh, or some, some department of the supervising government need, need us to call back some specific device, medical device, or some other things happen, and we can use the uh, just the number of the uh, UDI, or we can also use some PI or DI information to do the check, and we can immediately uh, check what what are the procedures, or what are the sites uh, if the medical device experienced in our hospital. So this is the close the load management of high value medical device in our hospital. And the nurse lays the order based on the inventory, and the buyer check the order and send the send to the suppliers. And suppliers scanning the GS1 code and get the hospital code and delivery slip. And the inspection of the medical device then scans for charging and recording the information. And then the financial department will do the assessment about the medical device. So let's talk about the benefits of the implementation of the UDI. Uh, I think for our healthy care price providers to, uh, and it's, it will help us to stress the risk management and control of the clinical use of the medical device using, reduce the device errors and ensure the safety of the uh, patient's medical device using. And it also can help the public to feel uh, terrible when purchasing, uh, when purchasing and using medical device. So uh, this is talking about some spices, a special medical device that is uh, of, of, uh, uh, that is uh, that is orthopedic in front. Uh, because before we use this medical device, we need to prepare a large amount. Uh, a large amount, amount of this medical device, but we only will use maybe one or three, just the, uh, just the some of this medical device. Uh, so how can they to record this uh, information of the product um, in, in, uh, more efficiency and more convenient? And I just check from maybe maybe come from um, maybe come from America. They have a touch screen in ammo solution for preparing and managing and documenting the orthopedic implants and the trees through this their processing. And they, they can charging or do building by the touch screen. And, and they their nurse just use their finger to touch the screen to uh, choose which one they really use and which one they want to, to do the charge. So it's very convenient. But I hope that one day our hospital can do things like this. And we can see this document tree is also a uh, very special one for the medical device. And every uh, circle uh, is the RFID part, and it will record the information of the UDI. And the nurse can use with a laser pencil to, to choose which one they use and to do the charging. And maybe sometimes the medical device will be wasted, and they also can choose this a button to waste this uh, medical device. The UDI system will promote the realization of smart medical device to provide and social governments help, help the industrial uh, transforming, upgrading, and health state developing provide the public with safer and more efficient medical service. And will give people a stronger sense of self-fulfillment, happiness, and security. So that is all of my presentation. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thanks a lot, Simang, uh, for this great and comprehensive uh, presentation. We have just seen how a hospital can benefit from the different UDI regulations that are around the world. So I hope this uh, project will inspire other colleagues at hospitals around the world as well 
to implement such a uh, fantastic project. So thank you so much. We will now move to the uh, question and answer uh, session. So remember that you can write your question directly using the update you uh, and i section on the platform, and we will address them to the speaker. So there is already one question on the chat, let's see Meng for you. So the question is, is it mandatory to keep the original labels? I should think the scanning information can be seen as enough information regarding the device used. Um, thanks for your questions, but it's it's based on our uh, regulation because Chinese regulations need the nurse to keep the original labels and they need to stick them on the sticking page and keep it in the patient case. So it's based on our regulations. Okay, thank you, Simeng. Well, there is a it's not it's not a question, it's just a clarification that comes on the chat from Christine. She is asking, please, what did uh, you mean by charging? Then it states at your presentation. Sorry, I don't understand this question. What the price enter mean by charging? There must be something you mentioned on the presentation. So, uh, um, well, we... it was related to charging the information on a PDA, I think. Yeah. Uh, the PDA not for charging, it's for band the name of the nurse and operating room number. Okay, Simon, there is another one coming from our colleague Jasper. Uh, it says, thank you for a great presentation. The delivery note in your process is based on GS1 EDI standards. It's GS1 UDI, uh, the UDI based on GS1 standards, yes. Uh, because uh, nowadays it's nearly 50% person, tender persons, uh, medical, high value medical device label uh, based on the GS1 standards. So we can, uh, scanning this this label, this code, and analysis their information, both PI and DI. And it will guarantee the delivery notes. Just uh, automatically uh, fill out the information, like the name of the the name of the uh, product and the model of the product, the name of the manufacturer and the expiry date and so on. The batch number or serial number. Yeah. Okay, so we have another question is uh, moving from traditional, let me say traditional management to an integrated and automated uh, management involves as we have seen many changes in parallel. So that means product identification, information capture, uh, and so on. So uh, what has been, oh, sorry, what has been in your opinion the the biggest challenge you have faced and, and how did you uh, overcome it? Um, thanks for your question. I think the difficulty is a lot of Chinese, uh, a lot of Chinese manufacturers can not, uh, cannot do the employment of the UDI uh, uh, on their product. I mean, their label, uh, their label is not uh, based on the GS1 standards, so our system cannot analyze them. So it's still used. Uh, they still use to uh, the manual input the informations to uh, to get uh, to generate the delivery notes. So they also have the risk of the errors by the manual input. Yes. And maybe Simon uh, related to these uh, changes um, and the. The way of doing things, despite the, the introduction of automations that can facilitate the day-to-day -day work of the different uh, professionals, is always a challenge, as you we have mentioned. So, how has been the reaction uh, of the hospital staff to these uh, different ways of, of working? Let me say. Uh, sorry, sorry. Can you say again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were we were talking about that you have been. Um, facing different uh, changes uh, in the hospital. So what has been the reaction of the hospital's staff 
to these changes uh, of the hospital professionals? You mean the doctor, nurse, staff? Yeah, all this stuff related to the uh, management of medical devices. Um, actually, they have different. Uh, they have different res respons uh, responsibility. So, uh, like me, I'm a staff of the medical equipment department, and I do the regulations. Uh, so I will check their orders, uh, check the requirements from the clinical department, and the nurse. Uh, they mainly take responsibility for the charging. So they need to scan the UDI for charging because we are already uh, banned the charging code in hospital. Our charging uh, charging code, uh, our hospital charging code with the UDI, uh, with the uh, DI, yeah. And uh, when they scan this code and also can do the billing, yeah. And for the doctor, they need to give their requirements of the, uh, they, they take more consideration about what kind of the medical device they want to use? They need to choose their uh, choose the brand, choose the and also make the uh, they also need to to uh, to think how how many they want and which brand they want and uh, and place a uh, order on online and this order will uh, push it to our department and we will check check the orders and send it to the supplier. And the nurse mm, take responsibility for billing, yeah. And also stick the label, original label on the patient case. Okay, there are some more questions on the chat for you, Simeng. So the first one will be, the UDIDI of a specific device could change either due to the following, the GS1 healthcare GT annotation rules standard or due to the regional UDI regulatory rules. Do you have an insight how the hospitals can handle such change in their system? Uh, I'm sorry, give me a second. UDI, UDI. Ah. Um. Yeah, the UDI DI may like uh, firstly thanks for questions and I know that the DI may be changed, but uh, as I have mentioned, the 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 four sides of the implementation of UDI when they when the manufacturer wants to change their DI information, they need to do the registrations on uh on the on the database. So our system is con connected with this database. So when the database change, we also can change. So we also can analysis the, we also can analysis the true, the true, uh, the true DI of this of this uh, JS1 code. So we we have uh, we can if the database change and we can change our information immediately. So the system is be connected. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there is another question regarding the uh, regulation, I guess. So it's I'm asking, doing... is it mandatory for all medical device with UDI levels? And for a consumable device like nut, nail snap, how to manage this kind of devices? Names, months. Um, thanks for your questions. We divide our medical, medical device to uh, basically to two parts. The first one is high value medical device. So all of these uh, medical devices, we, we, uh, we will give the requirements that the manufacturer needs to uh, put the label based on the GSM standards. Uh, and uh, they, they need to they need to put the label like this, and uh, they they need to uh they need to automatically uh fill up the delivery notes by scanning the UDI the JS1 code. But for the uh like the uh, low value medical device, they, they don't need them they are, uh, them to do that. But uh and also in Chinese regulation, the Chinese 
uh, uh, government also published a uh, published a range of the medical device which one which, which which of them need to which which of them need to uh need to need to do the UDI and the, the in only the high value medical device they maybe I think the nine nine kinds of the medical device need to do the UDI but the other one uh, they they cannot do the, uh, they they don't need to do this so uh we just divide to two parts to to do the management that's all. Okay, thank you. We have another question regarding to uh, well, more complicated, let me say this way, a scenario, which he, which had the kids. So the question is, when we are implementing UDI and have a kit or a system pack, do we need to have a separate UDI for the device and accessories and a separate UDI for the kit? Thanks for our questions. I think we need because um, if, if you are a patient, you'll also want to know every part, every one of, of the or uh, suit or kit uh, about your surgery. I, I mean, everyone, we want to know the information about it. So I think uh, if the suit or kit have the UDI, that's good. But, uh, but at least every, every part of the suit need to have the UDI. And if, if the whole if the whole suit or kit have another UDI, that's good. This is that can analysis and can show the all all the part of this suit. Uh, and everyone uh, everyone also have the UDI separately. So that's perfect, I think. That's all. Thanks a lot, Simek. I don't see any other uh, question on the chat, but you have still uh, time. So. Um, my question for you, Simek, is what do you think is the most relevant aspect of the information, implementation of the UDI in the hospital that you have uh, experienced? You mean, you mean the important part of no, no. when I do the... In general, the implementation of the UDI in the, in the hospital, I mean, you, uh, the benefit that are more impactful, more relevant for the hospital regarding this uh, project. The major change with the major impact. I think um, uh, training is important for us to 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 we we may do this work um, because in China and especially for some not very big city, um, the people also need to use the medical device especially for some healthy care providers. But maybe they know, know very, uh, they just know a little bit of UDI or know nothing about the UDI. And they also don't know how to use it, how to uh, check the database, how to do the research. So they know nothing about the UDI, but actually uh, a lot of the products already have UDI. So uh, also for some doctor or some nurse, they also, also don't have a lot of the, knowledge about UDI. So we need to do the training uh, for the healthy providers, uh, for the nurse, for the doctors, and also for some patients to help them to uh, check by themselves what, what I'm really used during the during my seizure. And it's also a way to keep them uh, to to protect their uh, their the the right of the knowing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I have another question. What what advice would you give uh, to those uh, attendees that are listening to you today uh, from hospitals that uh, would like to start such a project? I sorry, mean, what, can you speak slowly? Yes, yes. Sorry for that. I can I can repeat. What advice would you give to those colleagues? that are listening to, to you today that works in a hospital and would like to start a project uh, such the project you have here with us, what should they start with? What advice could you uh, give to them? Um, I, I think they need to know the basic information about UDI, about the JS1 standards and 
And there are a lot of information on the website, and both from the government, different kind of uh, different uh, different uh, country of government, and uh, they can know the whole. Uh, they can know. Uh, they can know what is the UDI and uh, what's the main carrier, and how can they uh, so. What method we what, what method we can we can use in this analysis UDI like scanning or by the RFID or or something else and they need to know the uh, they need to know the real information about uh, UDI about the uh, GSM standards and then they can know uh, what ways what method uh, is proper for their their work. And, and also, I, I imagine they can. You you have been uh, supported by uh, our Greek from GS1 China as well. So, uh, if anyone on the uh, webinar today is willing to implement such a project, they can rely also on the GS1 MO locally uh, in their countries. So, um, there is another question on the chat uh, for you, Simen. Uh, what are the difference between the UDI on the PCs? versus mobile device? And can you provide an example of the manage management process flow differs between one and the other? Sorry, this connect not good. I cannot okay. hear clearly. No worries. I, I will try to read it again for you. I okay. don't know if you can even read it on the chat. It's on the chat PA. If you don't listen to it properly, you can read it as well. The question is, what are the difference between the UDI on the PC versus mobile device? And if you oh. can provide an example of the management process flow differs. What are the difference in UDI on the PC? Oh, thanks for the question. So let's see, interesting. What's the difference between the UDI on the PC and mobile device? I, actually, I think there is no difference about the UDI on the PC or mobile device because uh, just like our hospital, we use the PC and uh, uh, we use the PC to scanning or uh, do some research about the UDI. I mean, if you just uh, copy the DI, the number of the DI, and put it in the website. Uh, I, I've mentioned the database, and you can check the info, all of the DI information about it, uh, about this product, like the name, the model, and the name of the manufacturer. And if you use your PC, your mobile phone, also can do things like this. Uh, just to do the scan, and it will be analysis. It, it just depends on what kind of the apps you use. Yeah, yeah uh, for our hospital, we just use our own system. Uh, but if you, I, I would try it before. If you use uh, like like some uh, UDI database, just a search by the uh, apps, like Apple, Apple Store or something else like this, uh, and download this apps. You, you also can use your uh, phone to scan the code and to check the information if it has uploaded their information in this database. And it's also, uh, I have mentioned in our presentations, that every normal people also need to use the information, the knowledge about UDI and JSON standards, because when you, uh, when you buy some things, I mean, not only for the medical device, you, you buy some things, you also can use your mobile phone to scan and get the, the obtain the information of this product. And you can know, uh, you can know the original information from the manufacturer. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. There are some other questions coming on the chat for you. Yeah. Um, first one is, I don't know, if you have the answer for that one, but are you using other GS1 standards in the hospital, uh, not only for medical devices? And is there a plan for that? Thanks for your questions, but unfortunately, I'm the staff of the medical equipment, so I only take responsible for the medical device. 
So I, I, I don't know the other, the other works uh, related to the UDI in our hospital. Uh, as I know, there may be no, but I think maybe like the, maybe some other, other departments, they also can, also can think about how can they use UDI to, to improve their, um, their, to improve their, uh, like inflation self work or something else. But for me, I only know the medical device. So sorry about that. Okay. Uh, there is another question on the chat, maybe uh, is, is similar to the first one. Which department in the hospital that's suitable to introduce this one as standard? Ah, thanks for your question. Uh, it's definitely our hospital, the medical. Our, uh, the name of our uh, our department in my hospital is the medical equipment department. But for some other hospital, I think maybe medical device department. Supervision of the medical device department or something else, but um, but I mean, uh, in this department, do some supervision work or regulation work about the medical device. The, the GS one is definitely a good choice for them because they can, uh, because GS one give a bridge between the suppliers, the the I mean the original manufacturer and and uh, and the hospital. Um, usually, like our hospital, we cannot buy something uh, uh, directly from the manufacturer. It, it must be some sub supplier in maybe in China or in our pro pro province. Uh, there, I mean, there are some sub suppliers in the middle of this uh, of this circle. So, so the GS1 give us the uh, channel that we can know the real information come from the original manufacturers and they can make sure the accurate and the authenticity. Yeah, that's all. Perfect. Thank you so much, Iman, for your, all your answers. Uh, one more question. So it says, have you implemented a reported function of the medical devices using the UDI? If so, can you provide example of how it was implemented? Um, reporting function. Reporting function. Thank you for your couple. Uh, thanks for your uh, questions. But I don't know what kind of the report function you you ask. Uh, we we do some report like um uh, like like the financial department needs to know the real uh usage of the quantity. Uh, of the different uh, brands of the man, uh, medical device in our hospital. So I will check uh, how how many uh, the the medical device do the scanning by our system. And this this number is just what the financial department wants. Like this report, uh, we will use this first one. The second one is when some uh, when some hmm, and some supervision government departments need to need uh need our hospital to go call back some medical device. We will use the UDI to check uh to check the information about the medical device in our system. So we will know uh do we do we uh buy uh, by the uh by the specific medical device about what, what they want to call by. And we will know which one use this and what the name of the patient, what the name of the doctor, and who do the acceptance like this, this two reporting function. I, I don't know if, if this, your, is the reporting functions, your, uh, your meanings, but for me, it's like two report functions we use. And that's all. Thank you, Simeng. If it's not uh, what he expected, uh, he can. Uh, we are, we are we have still time to populate a new question. So, um, another question for you, Simeng. What is the yeah. registration framework in China for class two and class three devices and in vitro devices? Thank you for your questions. It's very professional questions for the medical device. 
actually, uh, I, I, I don't know much about this because this uh, work for the for the reject uh, for the registration registration uh, department of governments. They they do this these things, and we we just healthy care providers the medical units. We we are the user of the medical device. We we do not do the registration of the uh, medical device. So I'm so sorry I can't answer you clearly, but you can. Uh, you can just check from the um, uh, let me check. You can you can just uh, search the state food and the drug administration of China by the website. And uh, they they I think they have the English English uh, they have the English page show some information about the registrations of the. Uh, medical device in China. Yeah, I hope it will help you. That's all. Yeah, thank you for your advice. And also, maybe our colleague from G1 China, Shirley Wang, who is on the uh, call today, yeah, yeah, can, yeah. can help as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is another question. How can you tell you how long did the implementation project last? The whole implementation project last? Uh, for our hospital, it's nearly four years, actually it's three and a half years. Okay, thank you. And I guess we have an example of previous uh, question. It says, example, report of his history of particular medical device within the each stage of the closed loop management. It was related to the prior question. So I don't know, know if you have Something else to add? We do have uh, the we do have the record of the every uh, of the every style uh, of the whole closed loop management. Like firstly, uh, which which suppliers send this medical device to our hospital, and then who who do the acceptance and do the inspection uh, of this product. And then this all will record by the system. And then, uh, which, which uh, as I have mentioned, we have four uh, branch of our hospital. So which branch and which the uh, warehouse this medical device uh, will be stored. And then uh, I mentioned the nurse will bend their name and to collect them. So who collect this medical device? It's also a step. And then which nurse do the billing and charging about this medical device and uh, what what's the surgery of the name uh, what's the name of the surgery and what's the main doctor and who uh, and who is the patient and all of this so it's a closed loop management and if if you don't use this medical device you need to return this medical device to go back to the warehouse. So it also have the record file systems. So all of the parts are um, uh, are validation by the scanning of the UDR of the code. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. So maybe my I I don't see any other questions on the chat. There is a question that I would like to ask you directly. Is uh, what is the next phase of this uh, project, Simei? Is there a next phase? What do you have in uh, mind? You mean the project of the UDR, the payment, yes. uh, the application of our hospital? Yes. Um, I want some more low value uh, medical device can be uh, can use the analysis of the UDI because the low value medical device do use the manual input. To, to record their information, to uh, record the batch number, uh, to record the expiration date. But as I have mentioned, if you use the manual input, you will have the risk of the errors. And actually, we do uh, we do have a lot of, but not too much, but we we'll, we'll, it will happen. There's some wrong number and wrong English number of, uh, in the batch numbers will be recorded. So I will need to. We need to do some, uh, do some things to like 
that give it back to the suppliers and uh, uh, and change another delivery note and uh, do the store uh, do uh, and do the acceptance uh, and inspection again to make sure the information is right. So it's very um, it's very complex. So I, I hope that one day the all of the medical device in our hospital can you can be uh, analysed by the scanning the GS1 code. Hopefully. Thank you so much, Meng. I don't see more questions on the on the chat. So I would like really to thank you and congratulate all this uh, well, great project for uh, sharing your knowledge with all of us today and, and also to show real evidence on how GS1 standards can bring many benefits to the management of medical devices in the hospital setting and, and, and taking benefits from the UDI mandate. So it's is a is a great project indeed. So I would like also to give a special thanks to our colleague at GS1 China, Shirley and, and Flora for your support and for bringing this project to a global audience. And of course, to all of you for your attendance, your interest, and for bringing so many questions to CIMEG today. And uh, last but not least, I would like to announce that the day of next webinar will take place next 8th of June. So please book it in your diaries. Nothing else on my side. Thank you very much for your interest. And we will continue to learn and share many more success stories soon. Stay tuned. Thank you and good evening. Thank you. Bring.